Just as we were able to get a generation to cut back on smoking, e-cigarette use among teens tripled last year. Joining us to discuss the potential health consequences is Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. Hi there, hi there. This is such a timely and important topic. You know, last year there were more teens who used e-cigs than regular cigarettes. Now, I want to put a number to that because it's really important. We're talking about two million high schoolers and about half million middle schoolers. E-cigs are designed to actually look and feel like real cigarettes. And this is how they work. There's a battery, so there are no matches or lighters or anything, that actually heat up an atomizer. That atomizer goes on to vaporize a nicotine-infused liquid that sits over in that cartridge. It vaporizes, and that vapor is inhaled, and that goes on to go to the brain by way of the bloodstream. There are other devices used to vape. You'll see vape pens, vape mods. These resemble fountain pens or small flashlights. The difference between, say, a vape pen, it actually allows the user to put in the desired amount of nicotine or flavorings. They can also adjust the vapor concentration. Now, that, of course, can bring some unique challenges because nicotine itself can be toxic. There has been a rash of nicotine poisonings as a result of young people. They'll actually ingest those liquid capsules from the devices. Now, I'd like to introduce someone, Delia, a 16-year-old high school student who first experimented with vaping last year. She's here today with her mom, Grace. And Delia, why was it that you decided, you know what, I'm gonna try vaping? I was curious. I saw my friends doing it. They all had vape pens. So I wanted to know how it felt. I ended up trying it my first time without nicotine, and it was cool. Now, they allow you to vape at school? No, no, they don't. But their size and how they look makes it really easy for them to be like, hide, like they can hide them. So I even wanted one. So I ended up asking my mom for one, but I would have to be 18. So Grace, as a mother, I have to ask, what was your reaction when Delia said, Mom, I want a vape pen? No. Absolutely no. <laughs> <laughs> I also understand, Grace, that you asked her to educate herself about the dangers of smoking, which was also a really good move. Now, there's a lot of information that's available about the dangers of smoking, but not a lot of information that's yet available about the potential risks of vaping or using e-cigarettes because it's new. Now, the medical and research community has become involved. For example, the American Medical Association is trying to get the age required to buy these from 18 to 21. And more and more research is coming out. So there's a recent study that found that in ninth graders who used e-cigs, they were four times more likely to go on to use cigarettes, cigars, and hookahs. A study that came out earlier this year looked at whether or not the actual devices might cause the production of toxic substances. And it was found that, yes, there were some. Now, we weren't sure of how those devices delivering this vapor to the respiratory system would actually act, but some of these substances have been found to cause cancer risk under other circumstances. There's a lot left to learn, and mm -hmm. everyone needs to remember, adolescence, it's a truly critical time when you're talking about brain development. Nicotine exposure can lead to lasting harm to the brain, promote addiction, and even lead to sustained tobacco use. The other thing people need to realize is that nicotine, the larger the dose, the greater the effect on things like blood pressure and heart rate. Too much nicotine can lead to serious medical problems and conditions, including heart disease, really rapid heart rate. These are things that a lot of youngsters don't quite realize. What we really want is for you to know how important it is for you to be informed when you're making decisions about doing something or using something that has uh, potential health risks. It's important every time to not just learn, but to keep abreast of new things that come out on these new activities that you're thinking about doing. And of course, information being key, you can always go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. Delia and Grace, thanks so much for being with us. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Okay. thank you as well. We'll be right back.